Hey, this is uh, Mikhail Golovny, senior scientist at Salford Systems. Uh, what I'm going to discuss in the next uh, short video is uh, so-called univariate analysis using uh, battery one-off. Uh, the idea behind univariate analysis is uh, that you want to study as a some kind of preliminary investigation, what is the univariate relationship between, say, the target of interest and all of the available predictors? So typically you have a data set, let's say you're interested in modeling a regression, as you have a continuous response variable. And uh, in my example, I will work with Boston housing data set. So suppose you're interested in studying uh, house values or how expensive houses are. Uh, so that's your target. And then you also have a set of available predictors. Let's say house size, age of neighborhood, uh, crime rate, pollution rate, uh, distance to downtown, and so on and so forth. So the very first initial uh, stage of your study, you may want to do some uh, simple univariate analysis, which is figuring out how individual predictors by themselves, one at a time, connect to the target variable. Of course, univariate analysis is usually just a very simple initial snapshot uh, because you can extract a lot more uh, information and insights once you allow the variables to contribute jointly. Uh, but that's a whole other topic. For now, let me just show that how easy it is to gain some very interesting insights by studying just individual uh, like, uh, dependencies between available predictors and the target variable of interest. So let's focus on battery one-off. But before we do that battery, I just want to show usually what univariate analysis involves in a conventional approach. So I have SPM running here. So first I'm going to open Boston Housing data sets. It's a CSV file here. So I click open. And for now, I'm not going to do any specific analysis, so I'm going to close this window, go under Explore, and pick the correlation item, menu item. So I pick the correlation, and uh, I will highlight all of the available variables, or alternatively in your studies, you could come up with uh, whatever subs subset of interest. Let me click OK, and it automatically generates for me the so-called correlation matrix. Now the correlation matrix shows uh, basically simple uh, univariate correlations between all pairwise combinations of variables. Now in my case I'm interested in variable MV, that's my target, house values, and uh, in this case by looking at those individual correlations I can find which variables are either strongly positively or strongly negatively correlated with my target variable. So for example when I scroll here LSTAT has a very strong negative correlation with my um, response variable. On the other hand RM has a very strong positive correlation with my response and so on and so forth. Now the correlation just gives me the overall summary of a linear trend. It is a lot more instructive to look at uh, what happens to the actual nonlinear trend. Now, to highlight what I mean by that, I opened up an Excel spreadsheet here with the copy of my data set. So those are the actual numbers. And you can uh, use Excel to say plot say between MV and RM. Uh, we know that based on the correlation matrix there is a strong positive correlation between those two. But when you look at the actual scatter plot then you can see that these two variables they're kind of uh, connected uh, like this. So maybe there is a linear trend here, but that linear trend only occurs between, say, 5 and 8, and it doesn't uh, go outside of that region. Uh, likewise, if you look at MV and LSTAT, and go ahead and check the scatter plot, then what you will see that there is a kind of a negative trend, but it also is not necessarily a linear trend, but it shows some kind of non-linearity. Now, ideally, you would want to fit some kind of general trend line here, and the battery one-off is specifically designed 
to help you with that process. So I'm going to switch back to SPM and this time activate my model setup and use 3Net gradient boosting to build basically models for my target variable MV using all of the remaining predictors one at a time. There are 13 of them. So I will be using 3Net to generate 13 univariate models, one for each available predictor, just to gain a better insight on the nature of univariate correlations. Just a few recommendations how to run this setup. So this is a regression run but you could also do similar things for classification if you want to. In my case, I will use 20% of data as a test sample. Alternatively, you could do cross-validation. You could even disable testing if uh, you don't want to uh, waste your time on doing some fine validation uh, steps. Uh, the tree net itself, uh, I will run uh, with the learn rate of 0.1. And instead of 1,000 trees, I'll use only 100 trees to speed uh, things up. And the key part here will be battery. And under list of batteries, uh, just look for the battery one-off in the description one predictor model for each predictor and keep list. So I'm going to click add. That's all you need to do. You don't really need to configure that battery any further because it's fairly straightforward. And then I click start to essentially uh, force the tree nut engine to build all 13 individual univariate models. Uh, as you can see, the process happens fairly quickly and you can easily extend the list of predictors to whatever number you like. And our final goal here is to look at the resulting models and identify specific predictors that are highly non-linearly correlated with the response variable and also the nature uh, of those uh, dependencies. Okay, so let's wait for the report uh, to show up. So I'm going to get this battery results. So I'm going to sort my uh, uh, look at the R squared performance and then I'll also do the sort by R squared descending. So I'm looking at test sample performance in terms of R squared uh, of all of these individual models. And notice that the LSTAT has the highest resulting R squared. And when I double click on that model, it shows all the usual 3Net stuff. There is only one predictor that was used, LSTAT in this case. And uh, in this point, I'll just go straight to display plots click on show all and this graph here shows me the natural uh, extracted nonlinear trend in variable LSTAT as detected by TreeNet. Now going back to Excel, uh, we already generated this scatter plot between MV and LSTAT and as you can see what SPM did here it quantified that actual trend by doing the actual extraction using uh, the tree net part. So not only do we know that LSTAT is negatively correlated with MV, we also know exactly the shape of that dependency. In a similar way, uh, you can look at the next uh, best model in terms of performance, R squared 50%, and that stands for RM, so I double click on that. Uh, I go under display plots, show all, and this time it shows the nature of dependency on RM. And again, it's kind of non-linear, more like a step function with the, the uh, most transitioning happening between five and a half and seven and a half. And if you look back into the Excel spreadsheet, MV versus uh, RM here, as we pointed out in the very beginning, uh, it really indeed showed this kind of uh, transitional area over here. But what's more interesting, TreeNet actually identifies some of the fine uh, deviations of the structure and then you can either smooth it out or uh, do further investigation on what's happening. Finally, it is worth noting that when you look at the bottom of this list, here you will ha have models that, are, ha that have a very poor 
non-linear dependency in a univariate sense with the target and distance being one of those, distance to downtown. Uh, if you look at the uh, <coughs> correlation matrix, distance actually had a positive correlation with the home values even though it was pretty small. Now, Trinet further refined it as having an R squared of 0.12, and when you click on that model, you'll see it's a very weak model, but if you look at the plots, you can still see the overall suggested nature of univariate trend there. And again, when you compare it against Excel, you can see that Trinet really does extract what it sees. So if you look at the MV, versus distance and look at the scatter plots, then you'll see that yes indeed in the univariate sense there is some kind of uh, uh, trend here, but that's pretty much what's reported here by TreeNet. So at this point we have a we have a very nice compact uh, container of all of the 13 univariate models, you know which relationships are the most, uh, can, the strongest, which relationships are the weakest. Uh, you can also quickly look at the plots and see exactly the nature of the relationship. And by the way, you can always export plots into some kind of graphics file or put it as part of your report. I mean, it's all nice and easy with only a very few clicks. You can do that. But the point is, you have a very powerful way to quickly organize all of the univariate relationships and not just in terms of correlations uh, but also in terms of non-linear trends and uh, possible other things. So it's a very useful preliminary kind of exploration stage of course, it doesn't mean that this is the final model or that all of the univariate relationships will be uh, uh, kind of presented in the final report. And most notably, when we look at the variable distance here, the uh, univariate correlation is positive. And you also saw in the scatter plot it has a positive trend. It turns out that the real contribution of distance is the exact opposite as the multivariate analysis subsequently reveals when you allow all of the variables to contribute. But still, it is all very useful preliminary investigation and it gives you a lot of extra pieces of information that you can talk about, investigate, and present. So very interesting battery, battery one-off that generalizes univariate analysis uh, to make it a lot more convenient and a lot more insightful by taking advantage of the power of modern data uh, learning techniques like stochastic gradient boosting. And by the way, you can also change the engine into, for example, CART or MARS, and each engine will give you yet another alternative way to summarize univariate relationship. CART could give you a way to bin uh, the target with respect to any of the, uh, to bin uh, the predictor of interest based on whatever happens to the target. Whereas in the case of MARS, you will get a simple univariate a kind of piecewise linear regression replacements of all of these uh, uh, univariate models. So very interesting, unusual, and quite powerful that could enhance uh, all of the reporting that you may do as part of your consulting project. So keep that in mind.